Hi, my name is Dan and I'm one of the DT evangelists here at Digital Tutors. In this video, we're going to look at a question from one of our users, Adeptus, on some differences between fur rendered with Maya software and with Minoray. Okay, so here I have a simple scene from the advanced Maya fur menus course. Uh, basically just a ball here with a light in the scene. Now if I select my ball and apply one of these fur presets, say this lion mane here, and render this out, we can see that we get some pretty nice fur uh, just by using this preset. You know, I'm using the Maya software renderer. So let's go ahead and switch this to the metal ray renderer. And we can see right away that we're getting a very different result using the metal ray renderer. So uh, this was with metal ray and this was before with the Maya software renderer. Now the reason for this is because men the metal ray renderer handles fur differently than the Maya software renderer does. So Menoray renders fur as geometry using hair primitives by default and not as a post-process pass. So because of the different way that Menoray handles fur, we're going to get a different result. So uh, if we notice here on this particular case, uh, we're getting some kind of clumpiness in here. So there is something that we can do in order to get a slightly different result to tell Menoray to render the fur as a volume shader instead of as uh, hair primitives or as geometry. So to do this, what we want to do is to come up to the fur menu and go to, into our fur render settings. And we can also, uh, if we open up our attribute editor, when we have our uh, fur node selected, we can find the default fur globals. It'd be the same as coming up into our fur render settings. And in here, we'll find a metal ray area. So if we just open that up, there's going to be one option in there. And basically, that's going to allow us to switch between the hair primitive and a volume shader. So if we switch that to volume, let's save what we had out with the uh, hair primitive. And we can see that by rendering this as a volume shader, uh, we're not getting nearly as much of the clumpiness that we did before. So this was before with the uh, hair primitive, and this is with the volume shader. So as we can see with this particular example, we've managed to get rid of some of the clumpiness in our fur simply by switching the fur shader to a volume shader instead of a hair primitive. Now of course, we can continue to go in and tweak the look of our fur by adjusting many of the settings that are in our fur node. Now if you want to take a more in-depth look at some of the fur settings, I'd recommend checking out the Advanced Maya Fur Menus course. 